First off, I want to talk, there, I love this movie for a number of reasons. One is, it deals with art, which I love, it deals with politics, which I love, and it deals with international affairs, so it's got like a lot going uh, on with it. So what I'd like to start off is maybe the, not the uh, approach that most people would take. I'm really interested in you telling me about the art aspect, minus the politics, if you can separate the politics and the art, from Ai Weiwei. What is his? What kind of artist is he? What is his standing as an artist? What are the aesthetic, you know, values of what he does, independent of his role in China and the politics of the region? Well, Weiwei is definitely like a multimedia, multidisciplinary kind of artist. He's okay. got uh, whether it's photography or sculpture, and it, when sculpture, it can be marble, porcelain, woodworking, furniture works. Um, he does a lot of big installation works uh -huh. um, and often uses either traditional Chinese materials or sort of craftsmanship or techniques. Um, or And he likes to use old materials as well, whether it's at, like actually old pots or old uh, temple doors or things like that. Um, he really likes to play with themes of fake and real. In fact, his company is called Fake Design. <laughs> um, he's done sort of iconoclastic things like painting a Coca-Cola logo on a Han Dynasty urn or dropping a Han Dynasty urn in a photo triptych. Um, some of his recent works include the Tate Turbine Hall, which he filled with a hundred million hand-painted, hand-crafted porcelain sunflower seeds, which, you know, basically a lot of his works, I feel like there's always a lot of layers of meaning, and it's not yeah. even necessarily that po political isn't even necessarily the primary one. Huh. Um, Salman Rushdie wrote an op-ed about Ai Weiwei while he was detained last year, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, his works aren't necessarily aren't necessarily um, political. They tend towards the mysterious, and that, that's one of my favorite sort of descriptions of Ai Weiwei's uh, work. Oh, that's good. The thrust of the movie is so political. I think I think it's refreshing to actually hear that he has standing as an artist outside of the political context of that art. So is he is he considered? I'm trying to get a sense. Is he known in China as primarily, you know, the sort of the dissident artist? Um, is he better recognized around the world, which often happens with uh, with some um, artists that they're better better known or, or more appreciated outside his own country than than home? What's his standing as an artist in China? Well, the truth of the matter is that he's never had a solo museum show in China. He's is had some right? gallery shows. Um, but his biggest, the biggest shows of his life have taken place in Germany and the UK. Um, and that is not by his choice. Uh -huh. uh, that is because the truth is his reach is limited both as an artist and also for his political organizing commentary, whatever it is. It's limited by the fact that it's a system that has a controlled press. That it has, yes. um, and it also has controls over cultural events and production and things like that. So... Um, that's why I think his use of social media, if you see what he's doing on there, the fact that he is so active with blogging and then now on Twitter, and he, um, all of his stuff on social media is in Chinese. And I think that shows you who his primary audience is, that he's trying to find the different ways to get back to the people in China because he knows that uh -huh. coverage of him and the ability to show his works is really limited in China. Okay, this is great now because, yeah, he is, I mean, he took blogging to new heights in China, and then when blog, his blog, his website was basically shut down, he went to Twitter. So what I want to ask you is, do you think that his the act of blogging, his the way he blogs and the way he tweets, is that artistic? Is it political? Is it impossible to, you know, you know, intersect the two in a I mean dissect the two? That was definitely one of the major questions I had as I was embarking on this project. Okay, I want to spend a lot of time with Weiwei and I want to really figure out some you know, I feel like I didn't know much about him and I came to it really open. And so one huh. of the big questions was art activism is there a split you know what or you know what motivates each side um, and for me that question pretty quickly fell away as I realized that the way I see it is that Weiwei believes that the role of an artist is about communication and about social engagement about being relevant and commenting questioning engaging with the issues of your time the issues in your society uh -huh. um, whatever that might be I don't think he's particularly prescriptivist about what you then have to say but just the idea that if things are going on and you have an opinion 
you're not engaging with it in some way, that you're not really doing your job as an artist. Right. Um, and if you look um, kind of back at his work, whether it's taking lots of photos during the 1980s when he lived in New York, like an obscene amount of photos, 10,000 photos, <laughs> give or take, in a decade, or making these underground books that are kind of passed around in secret in China. I mean, you can see this like urge to find ways to um, build up communication and connect people, that this is kind of a strand for him um, in fostering his own art and others' art. Um, and so I think that when you get to the point when he, I like to say, discovers the internet in 2005, when Ai Weiwei like, probably first used a computer was when he had the chance to have this blog. Um, it was like, it all clicked, you know, like this is now the chance that I have, it's the, it's the tool to let me do more effectively what I've been trying to do all this time. Do you see that his, has his politics changed his art, his political activity, has it changed his art? Or in, or in some ways, has it trumped his art or his artistry? No, that's an interesting question for sure. I mean, I think, I think that it has changed his art, but not, I wouldn't necessarily say even the politics as much as the internet. And again, I came to this project very right. openly and I was hearing this from him as I talked to him about his art or his politics over the years, that he kept coming back to how important the internet was. And at first for me, and maybe also being younger and kind of uh, being able to take really for granted that the in what the internet is, yeah. I like didn't, I didn't appreciate as such a good, that it was such a good answer until I like really processed it to really understand for him, the internet is really a tool that is like it puts gives him a megaphone or puts his projects on like hyperdrive. Whether it's the fact that he can um, have an idea and suddenly engage so many people in it and call volu for volunteers. So many of his works right now actually are the result of him putting a question out or an activity out to people online and them kind of participating. Yeah. So when you get um, all the artwork that resulted from his work with the Sichuan earthquake, whether it's the backpacks work or whether, which was on the facade of the museum in yeah. Munich. Yeah, let's stop. Why don't you explain that? Because it's, it's a great moment in the movie, mm -hmm. but I would suspect a lot of people that are seeing that are going to see this interview won't have seen the film yet. Talk to me about how he used that earthquake for his artistry and his politics at the same time. Sure, and that's like a great example also of how he pulled in the internet to kind of both help his political activities but also his artworks. Yeah. Um, so he wanted to commemorate the victims, the children victims of the Sichuan earthquake in May 2008. He reached out to the government to ask for a list of their names in order to incorporate in a work somehow. Um, honoring the individuality and dignity of human life, everybody has a name. Um, and the government refused to give it to him. They said it was a state secret. So he wasn't going to rest with that as an answer. And so he put out a call on his then very popular blog that was not yet shut down and <laughs> um, asked for people to help him do a citizen's investigation to collect the names of those children. Um, and from that, so many, besides the fa that, uh, that one gesture of sort of political organization, but then it became this list was a physical list on the wall in his studio, and so many people came to take photos of it. And it's just, it's just like a typescript on a white paper. There's nothing fancy about it, but the act of collecting those is an act of provocation and art. Exactly, and the fact that that list was also a public Google document, so this, the, pu putting forward the issue of transparency also in the way that he was doing his work, and mm -hmm. he had all of his volunteers keep journals and um, made all this material public. Um, but then he turned it into a fine art response as well, which was in Munich he had the biggest solo show of his life, and he covered the f whole outdoor facade of the museum with children's backpacks that spelled out a sentence that was told to him by the mother of an earthquake victim that said she lived happily on this earth for seven years. Um, this is a giant installation, and he's also done many other ones incorporating children's backpacks. Um, so yeah, I feel like he's really able to find all these different ways we've talked about before him being like a multimedia and multidisciplinary yeah. artist. It's like his response to this one thing is manifested in so many different ways.